In this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about some of the photos that worked this year, but I'm also gonna go through the ones that didn't work and I'm gonna explain the compositional things that I got wrong, also maybe the settings that I got wrong, but the, the lessons that I learned over the year, because I always learn something from those failures. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll go away with some tips and tricks to improve your photos. everybody fantastic to see you all again so I'm here with Pebbles as well she's in my log cabin with me so um, she's just sleeping down there hopefully she's not gonna cause too much trouble anyway in this video I want to just go through these photos first of all I just want to show you this I got an ice pick <laughs> it's an ice pick Pebbles um, so I'm gonna do some more winter hiking and I want it to be safe so I've got this to basically help me get up the mountain, but also arrest myself if I slide for any reason. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna do it in Scotland in January. So, bit of fun. Right, Pebbles, you've gotta get down now. You've gotta get down. I've gotta got carry on with this. Yeah. Okay, let's start with this shot here, or more importantly, this particular day. This is one of those days where you look out of your window, the conditions are amazing, and you think, what am I going to do? Anyway, I've got fields pretty much like this all around me. So I've got amazing trees, but it's really flat and I just didn't know what to shoot. It was snowing really hard, as you can see here. So I got my 70 to 200 lens out, jumped outside and took this shot. And I'm quite pleased with this, but it's sort of, I don't know, I don't feel like the trees are perfectly aligned. I really like this tree here, but I'm just not 100% sure about it. I like the edit of it. You know, it was really white, so I didn't want any blacks in the edit. Um, I took a few photos of pebbles, you can see here, but <laughs> it wasn't just all about taking pebbles, I wanted to get a good shot. And then, and then I noticed this tree in the distance and I thought, I wonder if I just go really long and focus on this tree in the distance whether I can get some sort of abstract shot that sort of tells the story of this really heavy snow. And this is when I got a really good shot, one of my favourite winter shots actually from, from, from last winter, which was this shot here. Now, it was a really difficult shot to get, and I've got about 30 of them that aren't in focus because basically the snow was falling and the camera was focusing on the snow as it was falling down. Eventually though, I got it to focus on the tree and I got this really, really nice shot. I also got this shot here. And I felt like they just offered something a little bit different than the classic shot that I, I, I took of, of this tree. I was quite pleased with the, the tree, but I just didn't think it quite made it as something special, whereas these two you know, just stood out from the crowd a little bit. And often with photography, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take a photo that's just a little bit different, that just stands out from the myriad of, of images out there. Okay, on to the next shots that I want to go through. And these were a case of me going out um, into the wilderness. Um, in fact, in this case, I was climbing a mountain really early in the morning in the Lake District. And I was, I was hoping to go up and get some brilliant foregrounds with, with some nice background as well. But the problem was, and it was the same with this set of images and the next set of images that I'm gonna show you, I really didn't get really good light. And, and what I mean by good light is that the distance, if you look, the clouds are just very flat. There's no depth or depth perception within here. So although I've got a really nice foreground here, this rock here, you know, you, the layering isn't great. Everything's sort of bunched together a little bit. It's the same on this shot here. It's a brilliant foreground. I really, really like the foreground on it. But the problem is that I just don't think the rest of it, I mean, this one's a little bit better than the previous one, but imagine that with a bit of light. I think a little bit of light just hitting this mountain in the background, creating some definition, creating some um, element of um, texture within the mountain would have just elevated it a little bit. Also having a little bit more drama in the clouds in the background as well. Now, I'll get onto these bluebell shots in a minute, um, but I just want to go onto another shot where I actually had some better light on the foreground. This was a few weeks, maybe a, a few months later. I'd hiked up for a sunset, and I did a video about this, so I'll, I'll link it here. Um, and I got some really nice compositions. I felt like the composition was really good. I think the light on the foreground was really good, and I had different light on the foreground as well. I had this one, 
then I had this one here, and then I had this one with no light on the foreground. And I feel like, you know, I got a really good set of images there with the foreground, but again, the background didn't quite work. I had this blue sky you can see in this image here in the top right corner. And the problem is that I think that that blue sky just detracts you. Your, your eye just goes up to that blue sky. And what I really want in, in this is, is something a bit more dramatic, maybe some rain clouds, maybe some rays of light or something like that. Now, obviously you've got to work with what you've got, and I'm not saying this is a really bad image, but what it makes me think is that if I go back to this location um, and get some of these foreground rocks, I can create something really, really special if I get some different conditions. Ideally, I think what would look really good is when it's just rained and maybe a rainstorm's come through. So that's now in my head, you know, I can think, you know, I could hike up here maybe in conditions that aren't as, as sunny and warm as it was on, on this particular day. Harder to hike, but probably get a better image. Um, and yeah, so that was a, a good example of, you know, a number of foregrounds that I took where I didn't feel like the image was quite there. It was sort of 70, 80% there, and it was the weather that let me down. And that happens lots to me. There's so many times that I go out and the weather just doesn't quite work. It's either too rainy, too dry, too sunny. There's always something wrong. As, as photographers, we complain a lot. But, um, you know, it, that, that's what photography is all about. It makes me want to go and shoot more and, and, and try a bit harder. Okay, on to the next set of images that I want to talk about. And these are bluebell images. Oh, bluebells. <laughs> I really struggle with shooting bluebells. I don't know what it is. I think I've got a set of bluebell woods around where I live. And I just, I just don't seem to be able to find a really nice composition in those woods. Um, I feel like my woodland photography has come on loads in the last three or four years. But I still struggle with bluebells. Um, so I wanted to show you the photos that just didn't work so that, you know, you can see that it just doesn't come easy because often I share all my best photos, but you know, this was a photo where the light was amazing. And I'm thinking to myself, Nigel, just find a composition. There's got to be something here. And I just couldn't find anything. I got this tree in the end. It's not great this though, is it? There's this horrible sort of stubby tree here. This tree sort of just blocks the background. The light is really amazing, but it, it's, you can't just have amazing light and no composition. And you can't have a composition and no light. You know, the last set of images showed that. You've got to have both together. When those both come together, that's when you get something really amazing. So I tried a number of mornings, a whole week in fact, to try and get some shots. This, I think this whole top area is too busy. I had this broken, um, I could never find a, a really nice array of bluebells, this broken branch here. I'm giving excuses, but I struggled. Um, and then I found a composition. I thought this was a lot better, but I never went to this woodland when there was really nice light. And again, this was back in the other woodland. Again, it's quite, this is probably one of my better ones. I found this path of some nice light on the bluebells here. But again, I don't think it's particularly amazing. Um, I think this top half here doesn't really add a lot to the image. And then there's a few like that. You know, this one again, no light probably a little bit better composition, more light. The composition probably, you know, wasn't brilliant. This is, this is not bad, but it's not a fantastic co composition, this, this shot. And then this one, the final one that I wanted to show you was, again, it was sort of okay. I feel like if those trees at the top just had a little bit more structure, what I remember when I was taking this, what I was trying to do was separate the tree trunks out but I feel like the trees are just a little bit messy. They're not, not fantastic. You know, again, the light's nice on the foreground here. It's a goodish image, but it's not, it's not amazing, really. So they were my bluebell images, not, not fantastic. Okay, right. Let's go on to this location in um, Iceland. It's called Lam, Lanmanur. Can't pronounce it. I'll put it up here. But anyway, it's pretty spectacular. I've never been there before. I went there for the first time this summer. I went in a camper van, um, in my camper van all around um, the highlands of Iceland. It was really epic. You saw probably a video from me hiking up to this point here. I'll, I'll link it here if you didn't. This is actually a drone shot, but I was, you know, I, I was fairly high up anyway. I just wanted to go out and get this estuary. And I think that's a good shot. 
And then I took a few other shots, and these you can see, this was a 57 millimeter shot, this was a 72 millimeter shot. And what I was trying to do was trying to get some of these patterns. But when I got back to um, Lightroom and started looking at these, I felt like I'd missed some of the um, details and some of the compositions within the textures. And I think this is a good example of when you have a massive landscape like this, it's really difficult to see the details. You get carried away with the massive landscape. And sometimes one of the shots could just be in a tiny element of this landscape. And that's why you've just got to spend a little bit more time, not get carried away, arrive early, have an apple, just observe. And I don't think I did that quite well enough. I was probably concentrating on doing my video, you know, thinking I've got to get some shots. And I feel like this one in particular, there's definitely, I don't really like this bottom bit here, there's definitely a better composition I feel closer in into this area here. Now obviously I can crop in, it's a 45 megapixel camera, but ideally you don't want to do that. You want to get the shot perfectly. I had a lot of range on my 70-200 lens, which is the lens that I had on. I feel like I should have zoomed in here, and probably not that much, but if I zoom out to say 66, percent then I feel like there's a good shot sort of around this area here with this dark bit here and then this this nice area here so I feel like I missed that I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't a huge thing um, but it's something that that I need to keep thinking in my head when I've got my 70 to 200 on explore the range of it you know try and think is there a better composition closer in on the landscape I talk about that a lot but I think it's really important it's something I'm going to be thinking about a lot more so that was Iceland. Obviously I got some good shots from Iceland. Um, this one is, is one from my calendar. Um, there's a there's very few number, but there is a few calendars left. So if you do want a calendar, it'll still arrive before the new year, probably just depending where you are. I'll put a link in the description, but this is one of the good images that I got um, from, from Iceland where, you know, I, I got a really nice composition and this, this brilliant um, sunrise here, which was which was amazing. Okay, let's have a look at some ones from Ireland. So, so these were um, some shots that I took in Ireland. So I went and hiked down to this location, this beach with, with a castle above it. Um, I got some pretty good shots here, I, I feel, but nothing amazing again, nothing amazing. So I was taking this castle and I thought this was really nice. And actually just before this, I got a shot and this was just before dawn. I like this, I think this worked really well. I've, I've got the seaweed here. I've got this really long exposure. I can see the lighthouse just in the background here. Um, and I just feel like it's a really, it gets the mood across, you know, it was before dawn, we've got this sort of blue hour, you know, it, it's, it's quite, creepy a bit eerie and, and I feel like that works really well because it invokes a bit of emotion. Um, I don't feel like the other images that I took do that so well and there was a few technical mistakes on my half and there was a few um, just not really knowing what I was photographing I think. So what happened was the waves were really big you can see this huge wave here this is just massive so I was taking those waves and I was a bit just shooting waves and just getting a bit carried away. And I wasn't thinking and I left the camera on manual focus because I was doing some video as well. And often when I'm doing video, I switch to manual focus, but most of the time I shoot on autofocus. So this was on manual focus. So this part of the wave here is perfectly in focus. This part of the wave here is slightly out of focus. So I took a lot of wave shots that just weren't in focus, which was such a shame, like this one in particular, which. I thought would have made a really nice crop. I don't think I've edited this at all, but I thought would have made a nearly, really nice crop there. But it's not in focus. <laughs> it's just not in focus. And um, it's nearly in focus, but its focus is here, not here. Um, and I'm shooting quite long. I'm shooting at 70 millimeters and F8. So, you know, it's, it's just not reached far enough. Blech, such a frustration. And then I just I just kept going between this bit behind me and then this bit, and I didn't really have an idea of what I was shooting. What I should have done is shoot the detail of these waves because they, they were really nice shapes, the way they were crashing and the, and the wind was blowing them back out to sea. 
And I was struggling a little bit with this C stack here and thinking how can I include that in the composition? And probably what I should have done is just forgotten about that C stack and just shot the waves. But again, it's a thing where you think all that stuff's there, you wanna shoot it, there's a castle, there's, there's all, all these other rocks, and you wanna shoot everything. And I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I should have just said, right, the waves are amazing, just focus on the waves, or get a brilliant shot of the castle with the waves crashing in front of it. But, but what I did is I just kept switching, switching lenses, switching compositions, I ended up with not getting anything where really great, really. This is probably the best shot I got. Um, it's overexposed. It's not particularly great. It's not bad. It sort of captures the mood a little bit, but it's not amazing. Um, I, you know, it's definitely overexposed. If I just go to develop that now, um, then you can see that um, it's overexposed here and overexposed there now. It's not that overexposed, and I probably could just crop the sun out and you know go down to there and probably even crop those rocks up and just have it as a, a bit of a pano, which looks quite good, I think. But it's not the best shot I could have got from that location, and that frustrates me a little bit because the conditions are really good. However, completely different to that was um, later on in Ireland. So this was in... Uh, Northern Ireland, and then I went to um, actual the Republic of Ireland, and I got to this location. You've seen shots from there. In fact, I got a shot here. This is the shot that. So this one is the is the shot that worked out here. Um, so you can see it's pretty spectacular. I got amazing sunset. I got these really nice long exposure here, and then just this circle, this rock, which, and and the reason I got that. And I spoke about this before, I know, but it is so important is that I, I didn't feel very well. So I stayed in this exact spot for the whole time that I was there. In fact, I was led, I'll get this other shot, about, about here somewhere. And I, I was just, um, you know, because I was led here just looking at it for a few hours, I saw the change in light. So this was a shot that I start, started to take at the beginning and I thought, okay, this is quite a nice area here. I took this cliff, I thought this was quite nice, this cliff with the mountains in the background, there's a little bit of depth involved. Then I was going back to this, I saw these clouds in the background which I thought were quite nice. Then the sun got really epic and I thought a wide shot would be good, so I took this shot which worked really, really well. Then I went back to the other thing and, and basically, I had a lot more time, whereas that other place where I was shooting left, right, walking down, shooting the castle, then put changing lenses, this place, I was in the same place. So even though I was changing lenses, I, I was sort of shooting in the same direction most of the time and just shooting at different focal lengths. So I could observe it a lot better. And then eventually, you know, I got to this area here. I'd taken a lot of shots of this particular area and then I got to take this shot here which I thought was really, really nice. One of my favorite shots of, of the year, in fact. I took a wider shot of this as well. So this is that area and then I took a wider shot. Unfortunately on this one, I was shooting at eight seconds and it was really windy. It's not sharp, it's, it's not sharp. I, I hate to say it, it's nearly sharp, but it's not pin sharp and that bugs me. Um, but I've still got this other one that's a bit closer in and then finally I've got that one um, that I just showed you as a print. And I think that that's, that time spent, you know, is just telling me that I've got to do that more. I've got to just think, stick with a composition, stick with a, maybe not one composition, but stick with a location and just think, ah, can I get something out of that? Now, obviously you've got to know when to change because if, if it just is rubbish and the light's not hitting it right, then you need to move. But in this case, I was in the right location. It was really good and I just observed for three, maybe even four hours, just led there and I got some amazing images. Okay, on to um, the Faroe Islands. I just wanna talk through um, this, just quickly really, there's a shot that I took in the Faroe Islands and I feel like it was good to show my progression of images to get this shot. So we were, we were doing a workshop, we were walking up, some of us took the low route and we were walking down to these sea stacks here, this is Drangoneer, 
um, and Mass and a, another group took the high route. Um, so when we were taking the low route, we had a lot of time. We were just going, we arrived at the edge. This is the sea arch. I took some shots here with some out of focus foreground. I think this works okay. It bugs me a little bit that the sea arch there is just, it's almost not far enough over the horizon. So I don't quite like that. I feel like it needs to be under the horizon or a little bit further over the horizon. It's not bad, but I don't think it's great. So then I started going down. And as I went down, then the sea arch, obviously this is a much better shot. The sea arch is higher up. There's a good separation between the sea arch in the background and this sea arch. And you know, I've just got a really nice shot. The, the, the only problem with this is that I, I feel like the light was all on this area here. So I've got a lot of the foreground in shade and I didn't really like that. So I moved down a bit further and eventually got to this point where I still had some in shade, but there's a little bit of catching the light. And then there was this bit around here that was catching the light. This worked quite well because it was higher up. I could still see the C stack in the background. There's good separation because there were different tonal values, different luminosities, and it worked really well that. And then I got down to my final shot, which I really, really like, um, which is this image um, here. So I was lower down, and this take took a little bit of thought actually, because I wanted mass to be below the horizon. So I wanted it to be the right height for mass to be below the horizon. But I also wanted this to be either perfectly aligned or a lot off being aligned. So I ended up going for perfectly aligned because I felt like this intersection between this C stack here and the C stack behind was really important. And if I'd have gone too, too much further down, then uh, mass would have gone into the over the horizon. And if it had gone further up, then I felt like this didn't quite work. And so I got separation in all the elements and I got this beautiful line all the way around here to mass. And I, and I feel like this is probably, again, one of my best photos of, of the year. Really like it. But it was that progression of starting at the top, going down, and then just thinking about those compositions that really worked out. And it's something that if you're going somewhere, you're trying to find a composition, don't just stick to your first place you get to, try different places. Then when you get to the best place, that's what you've got to do and, and, and you know do, do what I was saying here. But yeah, just, just think about that. Okay, if you like this video so, so far, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. Um, it massively, massively helps me and my YouTube channel. It helps the algorithm, um, promotes it to more people. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing as well. Um, okay, on to the next shot that I wanna go through. And this, oh, frustrates me so much. Um, so this, um, actually, just let me go back. Before I do that, just let me go back here's what's really interesting here is the shots that mass took when when we were here because mass took um a shot of me when i was just walking down that ridge just to show the scale and it just shows the difference you can get when you're in a different location he had a long lens on to get this shot and and that i thought was quite interesting and then he also had a different interpretation of this shot with me stood on the end um a different edit a different position, different, a completely different interpretation. So it shows the different type of composition you can get when people see it through different eyes. So don't think there's only one composition at location either. Okay, onto this um, iceberg shot. So we were in Iceland not too long ago actually, and um, we were running a workshop, myself and James Popsis, and we, we went to the ice beach, and um, this is called the Diamond Beach in um, Iceland and these icebergs come off, go into the sea, and then wash up on the beach. And it is such a hard composition to get right, but I found these icebergs, I felt like they were nice. So then it was just a case of just waiting for the waves to come in and try and get the right sort of movement. I feel like I nearly got it, but not quite. This didn't work because I felt like these were too separate. It didn't really connect together very well. Then water came in and we got another iceberg arrived and positions itself perfectly. It was so good. And I was messing about with shutter speeds and you can see, this might be one of my best ones actually, but you can see the shutter speed in the background is 1.3 seconds. And I think that works well. The background waves are really nice. They've got that sort of movement to them. I quite like that sort of artistic sort of style to it. 
I like that, but I just don't think the wave connects the three things well enough. Um, and then I got to this shot here where the wave does connect it a little bit better, but on this side here, it actually goes off the side, this wave, and I feel like this wave needs to be complete. And I know I'm being really pedantic, but again, I think that's the difference between a good and a great shot. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed about that, you know, but just to give you an idea, I had hundreds of shots like this that were just totally blurred, out of focus, tripod moved. I tried some other compositions like this with different iceberg. The iceberg wasn't particularly nice. The sky didn't really work. I took probably five or 600 shots <laughs> and I got two or three that were okay. However, one of the workshop participants did really well. So Steve, Steve Marzen, who's been on a number of workshops with me, did a great shot. Here's his shot. And um, yeah, he had a slightly different angle, which I think worked a little bit better. He cut out the sky, which works a little bit better and got a really, really great shot. So yeah, well done, Steve. You did better than me. Next time, I'm gonna try harder and get something um, there. I think the key is finding nice icebergs and just sticking with it and just trying it, trying your hardest. Okay, I wanna finish with this um, set of images here. So this was um, an example of something that I felt worked. Um, maybe I could have done something a little bit differently, but I feel like I did a reasonably good job. I ended up getting a really nice shot here. This was in Iceland. Um, it was at Estrahorn and we shot all afternoon there. So we were there at sunset and it looked like there's a bit of a gap on the horizon. So we were shooting towards these mountains in the background across this really amazing stormy seas. I had my long lens on, this was about 93 millimeters and I really like this, I think it's really nice. And then I managed to get this shot here. So I've actually got a print of, of this shot because I really, I really like it. So just let me grab that. So this is the, um, this is this shot here. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's turned out really well. I really like the fact that all these waves just sort of mimic a little bit the mountains in the background. There's, there's that sort of synergy between the two things. I like the fact that we've got really dark sea at the bottom and then dark clouds at the top. I just feel like graphically it works quite well as an image. I was really pleased with that. And then um, the sun came out and we, you know, we, it was fairly easy really. <laughs> we were just stunning conditions and I got these amazing images. This was one of them. This was another, uh, again with a long lens and then this was the final shot of the sun just finishing there and then just got this wave. This was one that I probably felt I could have done a little bit better. I felt like I overexposed it a little bit. Um, and Again, I should have had a wider um, lens on it. This is 100 millimeters. I think I should have just zoomed out a little bit more to get the whole wave in. You know, often cropping something off isn't great. Having the whole wave, like I did in this shot, just works better, I think, as a photo. So, yeah, I hope that's helped. I've showed a lot of images that I liked and, and, and a lot of images that I thought could be a little bit better as well. Um, you know, please remember that I, I, I take now, I want everyone to know that because I show so many of my best images on Instagram and things that there's so many photos that just don't work out for me and so many places I go to where I take hundreds of photos and then that, that, that there's technical issues with them as well. I'm, I'm still learning as a photographer just as everybody else is. So thanks ever so much for watching. Again, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And until next Sunday, bye. Oh, oh before you go, Make sure you watch the next segment. I'm going to show you a few highlights from next week's video, which I promise you is epic. There's a rainbow behind me. I am freaking out now. This is literally the best conditions I think I've ever shot in. Oh my God, the light everywhere is just incredible.